What's up YouTube? Tonight's video, we have something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a video not only with me in it, but we're going to be doing a little bit of a topic questional video. So maybe this is something we can introduce to the channel further down the track right. I thought it'd be something fun and something I'm kind of interested in. Anyway, let's uh, snap to it. So uh, tonight's topic is all about whether I can faint a single Pokemon in a single turn with only damage from entry hazards, right? Now, obviously, already we know, I know there's going to be someone in the comment section that says this if I don't say it. We're not going to be including Shedinja, right? Because that gets snapped in one turn, all right? So goodbye, Shedinja. We're not including you in this little experiment. Now, um, obviously, this is something that I might do a little bit more often if you enjoy me being in the videos and stuff like that. Just let me know. I could do it a little bit more often, and maybe we could look on some other interesting topics or just general stuff. I don't know. Let me know. So, uh, I'm going to go over what the entry hazards are that are going to be affected in this video, and then I'm going to be providing some footage and see what came out in the experiment and further discussing the damage calculations and some further speculation. So, it should be a pretty fun video. So, I will have some stuff popping up on the screen around here, hopefully, if I didn't forget to edit in. And let's get into it. So, the first entry hazard we have is Sticky Web, right? Now, Sticky Web is going to not affect this at all. Basically, what Sticky Web does, uh, it affects the speed of the incoming Pokemon if it's grounded, and it drops the speed by one stage. So that one, we don't need to uh, look at that at all. Next up, we got Spikes, right? So Spikes is another similar one. If you are a grounded-type Pokemon, uh, you'll get damage from each Spikes, right? Now, Spikes can be set up three times, so three layers of Spikes. So that's going to be, uh, you know, a fair bit of damage, you know what I'm saying, right? Now, the next one we're going to be looking at is Stealth Brock or G-Max Stone Surge, right? So they both do the same thing. They both do Stealth Rocks on the field. Now, I will say one thing right now. They don't stack, so you can't just do that. Uh, you can't put Stealth Rocks on the field and use G-Max Stone Surge right after. Right? I tried that. It doesn't work, right? Um, I did that prior to this uh, experiment. So the next one we got is a G-Max Steel Surge, which is pretty cool. So unlike uh, the G-Max Stone Surge, right? This actually is its own entry hazard, so it'll put some uh, steel side of uh, spikes on the field, which is really, really cool. Now, uh, the last one we have got is Toxic Spikes. So you can put two layers of Toxic Spikes on the field. However, since it's only one turn, Toxic Spikes tends to be effective over a multiple like amount of turns, right? So we're only going to be needing the damage from one Toxic Spike, right? So that's going to be about it. I think that's pretty much all I need to explain here. I'm going to be providing some footage right now from the uh, battle experiment that I did yesterday, and I'll be writing uh, a couple of scenarios with different Pokemon. So my experimental Pokemon today are going to be, there's a lot to use, by the way, um, depending on Pokemon typings. We're trying to find typings that are most uh, weak to the entry hazards, right? Because different type Pokemon, uh, you know, are differently like weak to sort of move. So we're going to be using uh, Charizard, and we're going to be using Alola Ninetales as well. So there are two test subjects. There's quite a few Pokemon you could use. Anyway, people, let's get uh, cracking and let's see uh, what this experiment is going to do. Can we get the KO in one turn or are we going to fail? Let's find out. All right, people, it's mock battle time here, and we're going to be doing some testing. So my opponent here is Chekasaurus. Thank you very much for being the guinea pig of this uh, Pokemon battle experiment. So for the purposes of this battle, I am going to be removing my opponent's moves, right? So you won't be able to see anything like maybe using Leah 50,000 times, right? I wanted just to cut that out so we could get straight to the point. So I'm going to be using Ferrothorn here. Now, Ferrothorn is going to have a, uh, obviously three layers of spikes, and it's going to be having a Stealth Rock on the field. Now, that's not everything I need at this point, but uh, I'm going to be swapping into my Weezing here to complete the strategy. Now, what I want to be doing, right, is I'm going to be starting off with Nine Tails, and then we're going to be testing Charizard. So they're going to be, you know, both of my test subjects. So what I did, right, is I set down one layer of Toxic Spikes, because I don't want to have two, right, because I only want the opponent to be poisoned, not badly poisoned. Now, the difference between those two things... I'll explain as the video goes on, obviously, where it's most important, uh, not right now. So what I did, I just had out these uh, toxic spikes there. One of them, I just went explosion with my Weezing just to get it off the field right against the Gar Giratina, right? Uh, Giratina looking pretty fresh there in its shiny form. Now, there's one more aspect I need to do in this battle to get all the entry hazards on the field. We are going to be using Copper Raj here. Now, Copper Raj is uh, G-Max move. I explained at the start is G-Max Steel Surge. So a Steel-type attack, and it puts their uh, sharp spikes around the field. So it is a 
separate entry has it, unlike uh, the other G-Max move and Stealth Rock, right? So that's the difference, and I thought this could be, uh, you know, a good amount of damage. I will be running through the mathematics of each uh, sort of uh, damage on the Pokemon, and we'll be discussing how much it does and stuff like that. So uh, this Copperager as well was only level, I think it was like level 40, it was like a horrible, horrible set. But we, we didn't really actually need, even need to have like any good levels at all, we just wanted the entry hazards on the field. So uh, what I did right is I put these steel spikes on the field, everything is ready now for the uh, nine tiles to actually swap in. So the Giratina is going to swap out, and here we go people, here is the damage on the nine tiles, so here we go. Alright, so the first bit of damage is coming from this Stealth Rock. Since Ninetales is an Ice type, it's going to pay a 25% chunk of damage there. It's two times weak to it. As you can see, the chart sort of flows on each sort of typing weakness there. And I'm going to be explaining each turn as each phase goes by. So the next up is the Spikes. I did three layers of Spikes there, so that means it's an additional... 25% on top of the 25% we already did. As you can see, each layer of spikes does a different amount of damage. For the purposes of this video, I'm obviously going to be putting three of them down, right? So now we've got 50% all up with the 25 and the 25, right? So we're, get, we're getting pretty close. Now, the next turn is the uh, Toxic. It doesn't kick in at, at all to the end. And then we take a massive chunk from the Sharp Steel Bits. Now, looking at this chart, right, it's actually four times weak to the Steel Bits because it's a Fairy and an Ice type. But why did Ninetales live? Because essentially, when you think about it, it should have fainted it. 25 and 25 and 50 is 100%, but it didn't, which was really, really curious. However, the final Toxic Spikes damage actually managed to take out the Ninetales in one turn. So we actually got it. So a normal poison actually does one eighth per turn. And obviously the, uh, obviously the badly poison does a lot more damage after turn three to four. Now, I was really curious about this. Why did it not take it out? after it got to 100%. Like, why did it need that last little bit of Toxic Spikes damage to actually take it out in one turn? I was very, very curious about this. Now, I continued to actually uh, experiment on a Charizard this time, and I put Gravity on the field. That way, Charizard being a flying type, would be now affected by Spike. So we had the, all the extra damages here, exactly the same as before. And I was very, very curious where the Charizard would actually go down to it. But unfortunately, it didn't get that KO in the end there. And we had to try it again. So I did it this time with a Colossal. Now, Colossal's G-Max move isn't class as the entry has it. However, it does do damage at the very end of the turn. So I thought, I may as well throw this one in and give it a try. So we had that extra damage there from its G-Max move, which is G-Max Vulcan. If that goes for four turns and it also has a 1-6 damage every single turn, right? So that was actually enough to take the Charizard out in one turn as well, which is very, very cool. So we're able to take the Nine Tails out and we're able to take the Charizard out. But this question with the 25 and 25 and 50 still sort of... Uh, got me thinking so I was like let's do another battle this time and let's try something different out now obviously stealth rock is based on the amount of health you have right and the damage you take to stealth rock is very very similar to this sort of thing right so I was like let's make the uh, nine tails and uh, like an odd amount of health right and it actually takes it out in one shot there as you can see now let me explain that for a little bit when you do damages for entry hazards, right? Like, let's use Stealth Rock as an example. Sometimes the Pokemon, it's all based on the Pokemon's health, right? Uh, sometimes based on the Pokemon's stat, right? It will take a lot more damage than it does if it's got like a different odd or even number. Now, numbers are always rounded down as well. So that doesn't mean all the time that an odd number will be perfect for stuff like Stealth Rock. And sometimes it's very different uh, depending on what the Pokemon's health stat is, which I found very, very cool, right? How it was actually programmed in the game like that. This actually concludes our little experiment as to can we take a Pokemon out in one turn with only entry hazards? Yes, we can. We did it with Ninetales and we also did it with Charizard. All right, people, hope you enjoyed this video. It was super fun. I really hope to do something like this again. Uh, the end findings, obviously, we were able to take a Pokemon out in one single turn just with entry hazards which was super cool. However, it was very much affected by the health of a Pokemon, right? Uh, that being a uh, odd and an even number and how divisible they are. So without, I found without the toxic spikes on the Ninetales, we managed to take it out by giving the Ninetales an even stat, right, in health. 
However, when we did the Charizard, even when we gave it an even stat in health, it wasn't enough to take it out just due to its typing. There's going to be other Pokemon this is going to work with, but I thought this was a very, very fun little experiment. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below in the comment section if you want to see something like this again. I'd really like, uh, you know, it could be fun me getting on camera and doing some uh, fun videos like this every now and then uh, on the channel. And if you are new to this video, make sure you drop a subscribe and a like on the video, and I'll catch you people next time. Check out the uh, probably the playlist and some cool videos after this.